Happy Monday, everybody. Yeah. Happy Monday. Oh, damn. Mm, mm, Let's do mm, some mm, weird mm, things mm. here in just a minute. Uh, should, I, should I open this in the pre-show? Should I yeah. save this for another stream? No, no. Yeah, uh, uh, you can open it okay. right now. Who wants to see Bryce open his Christmas so, present? Yes, yeah, so I was going to... Well, before this, uh, John uh, got me this very, very nice framed Blade Runner laser disc. Yes! Director's cut. What? I look, it's <laughs> it's uh it's Indiana Greg and uh, Indiana Greg and Dan and, and there's the lady. The I love laser dead. I and uh, Chani from Dune. Do you guys remember <laughs> Dune? I was Only telling him ninety nine on eBay. It, it's it's currently <laughs> trending down at six dollars and fifty cents. I told John that uh, I have never held a laser disc before, so that's, that's awesome. a, that a un very unique. And you never it. will. He <laughs> framed it and threw it at you. All right, so this was on the. Uh, on the By the way, that's how that's how you hack gift giving is just give everyone laser discs because the novelty <laughs> counteracts the fact that it was seven dollars. It's brilliant. It's genius. <laughs> Ooh! Yeah. Oh my gosh, these are perfect. In fact, these will go perfect with. Uh, what are they? These what are nano leaves. You know, you know our friend Lobro. These are the oh, little panels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little panels. Yeah, that, thank that you so light much. Up and they yeah. look super like synth wave and shit. Oh yeah. my god, yeah, you're gonna fucking gussy your shit up. Look these at are these split. So awesome. Uh, and these are gonna be very helpful. I've got. Uh, I will announce it properly tomorrow. But gonna be doing a bunch of holiday streams. So. Awesome. Uh, so folks uh, don't have to be too too alone through, through the holidays. So uh, thank you very much, Brian. Yay! This is very nice. Yay! Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Uh, dude, that's that that that's awesome. Bryce, uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. In fact, Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas to all. But don't go. All. But 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 to all, not a good night because we're about to do the show. So don't that's fall right. asleep. To all, good asshole. morning. <laughs> to all, hello. Uh, Merry Christmas to all. And to all, yo, what's up? <laughs> All right, and uh, it'll just be uh, the three of us today. Cool. Uh, yeah. Andrew's, uh, which is uh, which is annoying because I was ex I was getting ready to talk Tenant with Andrew, and I watched the movie, and I didn't text him about it, assuming I would talk about it with uh, him today. And and now this this son of a bee bailed. Well, you have a uh, you 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 have a. Uh, 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 Andrew 2.0. He probably prefers you call him by his code name, Bryce. Yeah, well, I, I think that that, <laughs> that that the new version has diametrically opposing views to Tenet, uh, uh, which is uh, oh, is is uh, is is uh, uh, 1.0 uh, Andrew 1.0 is he loves is, it. Uh, okay. Andrew really Maine, Maine loves it. It Maine, is Im that is impossible to imagine for me that he likes that movie. <laughs> um, but he is in the camp of uh. Uh, which uh, no among the no most annoying or... no among the most annoying camps in film criticism you really have to watch it twice uh, oh uh, mm -hmm. like so that's which is like i mean look, this isn't the first movie to get that reputation although he also did say that for him it was a combination of primer and this david mamet directed movie spartan uh which if you consider the fact that I think a combined fifty people have seen both of those movies, it can explain its its uh, a global lack of popularity and and uh, uh, its very very excited Man, ability to not be accessible. Everything you've just said, just in my mind, like it moved, like I don't know, thirty percent more likely that I'm gonna love it when I eventually watch it. Uh, <laughs> like like uh, I mean, look, I, I, yeah, I I I wouldn't say that I didn't like it i i, I think oh, i can gosh. compare I'm, it i can compare it to other things and maybe i i get the idea when you get to the end of it and you're like oh like literally every frame of this movie you look at differently from when you get to the end but like uh boy get into the end boy you know i would boy get into the end yeah um I watched Tenant and then I watched Inception because I'd not seen Inception. And I think Christopher Nolan makes great movies that would be just perfectly at home on Saturday afternoon FX. They would be perfect dad movies to watch on the weekend. 
end of pepper. there is there is a lot of like every action <laughs> scene is kind but, of but, a but bond anyway, action we, we, scene. we can make this the show if, if we want to jump in like i don't mind okay. being spoiled on it because it sounds like it's unspoilable like if anything you guys will accidentally be pitching me on the movie let yeah well let's save that for the end of the show then okay. we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this round near the we'll, we'll carve it out in the show so we can have a have a spoiler alert for everybody all right let's start weird things here in three two Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined with Brian Brushwood. Yo, sorry, I'm just setting the thermostat to cool because it's about to get hot in here. Ooh, and yeah. Justin Hot Robert Young. <laughs> That's me, Hot Rob is what they call me. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, uh, hey yeah, man, look. why don't you take your issue down to HR? That's who we call <laughs> Hot Rob. Oh, so. <laughs> it, might be, it might be freezing outside, but the temperatures are rising when Hot Rob's on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> so uh I, i'm actually glad we've got hot rob here for this first news story <laughs> oh man oh you in know one you know, you know, second, you, know, you suddenly you realize know that moment you know that moment when you realize a joke and a joke is gonna ex escape velocity <laughs> yeah. and now become a thing so uh justin you are a florida native right you I are am, yes. from florida what are some of the fauna you would expect to see in florida i think i know what this story is uh uh i'm so excited so wait, the fauna is is animals, animals. Right? what sort of animals, right. would animals would you, you find all right in the, well, the florida these are, environment like, i remember one time actually andrew and i were driving back when when we both lived down there and we were driving back from lunch and we had to wait a solid 10 minutes because a gila monster the, the 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 size of a, a small sedan was was walking a, across the the area i mean like it, but where we were was right next to the everglades and it's like there is it's jurassic park in there and not in like the fun way where there's like big animals it, in murders. the like yeah <laughs> like it's just in the like, bad way <laughs> it, in in the like the world was inhospitable and there was just death it's just a million different things, big and small, that will kill you and are colorful and probably larger than you think. So uh, uh, I would say, yeah, lizards and, uh, of course, there, there's all sorts of colorful birds and everything. But mm -hmm. but that's usually the the Florida fauna. Um, and so, uh, Brian, I'm going to yeah. I'm going to show you I'm going to pop this monitor on so you can see this image. Brian, can you tell me before we show Justin the image? Can you tell me what this animal that we're looking at is here? Uh, OK. Well, uh, as the monitor boots up, I'm going to presume it's a Florida fauna, a member of the Notorious Gang. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I recognize this. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to say his name, but it involves uh, n half of the word notorious and half of the word superfluous. They call him Notorfluous <laughs> Fauna. That's his name, the Notorfluous Fauna. Got mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. It's well, it's 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 mm -hmm. it's uh, eh, I wouldn't be thrilled if uh if I ran across one here in Texas. Um, sure. But in Florida, makes sense. But does it make sense? I mean, it belongs. It's they're 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 okay. okay. Yep. You ever see Avatar? I they're the Pandorans. <laughs> we are the imperialist <laughs> Spaniards looking for the fountain of youth. We're the ones in their backyard, not I, the other way around. I see. Well, that might not be the case. Justin, I'm going to show you this picture here. Can you describe the image of the animal that we're seeing here? Well, that would, uh, but it's, it's an alligator, right? Uh, it's, it's different than a crocodile. But, oh, but, is it? Yeah. Oh, my oh, God. I don't know. No, now that you point is it, it out, is it is uh, it a I, crocodile? I know, I know that the difference between a crocodile and an alligator is the the uh, uh, alligators have flat, square heads, and crocodiles have pointy, sharp heads. Is that an effing crocodile? Is that uh, is that an all safe Floridian in Punta Gorda, Florida? A seventy-year-old crocodile has wow. been spotted. Oh. You just blew my mind because I thought I thought I knew this story, uh, and I'll tell the story I thought it was in a second. But I want to hear more about this. So, uh, 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 in Punta Gorda, which I believe is midway up Florida on the west side of yeah. the of the handle. Uh, and wait a minute, you know that Florida is right below Georgia. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wait. 
Brian, did you know that? Oh, you you said <laughs> like <laughs> wow. Like right like wow. touching it. They're touching. Yeah. You know, you know the little thing sticking out <laughs> from the southeastern corner of the United States? That's Florida. I always think about Florida as the crazy floppy appendage at the end of America, but I never think about it as literally touching the state where that city burned that time. Wow. So, uh, so yeah, so alligators are, are pretty common across Florida, but crocodiles are usually... By the way, our downloads just went up 25%. <laughs> I, that, finally, everybody was like, well, like, they're, at least they're on the program. They now. got the message. Uh, they got it. Okay, go ahead. So crocodiles are usually found more in the Caribbean, especially the American crocodile. So finding one this high north in Florida is pretty rare. You might only see them near the southern tip of Florida, not, you know, in uh, f further up the state. So, uh, yeah, they believe that it's uh, a 70-year-old crocodile. He's been relocated to the southwestern part of the state. Um, is about 10 to 15 feet long. Can can I admit that uh, I, for some reason, I guess I got it lodged in my dumb primate brain that crocodiles were always in the southern hemisphere or something. I, I guess I didn't realize that there was a Caribbean strain of crocodile. Like, um, uh, to, to, like the moment you uh, pointed out that it's a crocodile, I was like, what? A zoo, a drug dealer. I, how, how did it get there? Well, and it, it, it very likely could have been, right? I mean, uh, yeah, exotic uh, pets. I mean, yeah, spoiler, spoiler alert. Uh, uh, there's a lot of weird people in Florida. A lot of hot uh, uh, environments that you can keep certain animals that you probably shouldn't. And then there's probably, and there's also a will to keep animals that you definitely shouldn't in in Florida. So. I would not be shocked if this is somebody that, you know, gets a little bit of land. Punta Gorda is between Fort Myers and Tampa, basically. So uh, to give you a sense, if you go from the, the big population center in the southeast of the state, that's Miami, Fort Lauderdale, uh, it's only really like a half hour drive across the state and then maybe another half hour up the coast and you're there. So that's it, it's. It certainly would be a lot for natural migration, mm -hmm. but I would not be shocked if you found just really illegal and insane things all throughout that state. It, like uh, that, that, that shouldn't be there. Uh, worth worth noting, if if you could bring up that map again, yeah. um, when you look at it this way, um, you know the Caribbean. It, yeah, you'd have to go around the tip of of Florida to to get there, but. Like uh, about about um, I don't know uh, uh, northwest of Orlando there and that little uh, hook in there is Crystal Springs uh, on on the left side there on the west um, uh, where we learned when we swam with manatees we learned that uh, they'll migrate you know a thousand miles or more all the way from you know Alabama and beyond and and that's mm -hmm. that's annually just to get to the warm waters of of Crystal Springs yeah um, but still still a, still a strange sight. Can, Still a strange sight. Can, can I tell you the story that I thought you were bringing up? Sure. And maybe you can find the footage because I assume it's out there. Sure. Uh, this is one that I heard just in passing. And for all I know, maybe it was on a rerun and it's not even news. But uh, allegedly in Florida, there was some golf something or other. And somebody, uh, their ball landed on an alligator. Alligator was just chilling out. Dude completes <laughs> completes his run off of the back of the alligator. He Wait. That that is the way the story so, was presented. Yeah, as I a, think I remember seeing this video. That might have been a a holiday rerun because it, I do it, I do it could think be. that yeah. This is oh, December yeah. sixteen, twenty twenty. Man grabs golf ball that landed on alligator's tail. Is this? But oh. no, I think somebody Ooh. somebody played it. Somebody played it where it lied. Uh, uh, was, uh, with, or at least that's the way the story was com yeah. uh, presented. But if if that story just came out last week in 2020, then yeah, uh, I certainly believe that. I, was, I mean, still impressive. I wouldn't even. You know what? It's like that, I take the stroke. The ball. I you take the stroke. Have it's the fine. Ball. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> uh, shifting gears here a little bit. What do you folks know about the brain? Um. I know Not a whole hell of a lot. I know that the brain knows more about me than I know about it. <laughs> I feel like the brain's like the NSA. Uh, it's, it's, it's a knowing it is, stuff agent. It is, it is. It is only giving me exactly what I'm cleared to know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you ever, man, you ever? Don't you wish you could subpoena your own thoughts? <laughs> Be all like, "Hey, what was I thinking, Your Honor? I demand to know." Yeah. <laughs> Please. 
So there are different regions of the brain and the different brain regions communicate very broadly speaking. And uh, apparently there's a new study in the UK of about 40,000 uh, adults, the average age of about 55, uh, that found uh, this, this seemed, uh, when I saw this, I thought it seemed so obvious, but I had never thought about it. But um, people who were considered or had considered themselves lonely had different brain, uh, had a loneliness signature in kind of the volume of their brain region activity. So that's one of those uncomfortable thoughts that, that we all like to walk right past. We like to think of our brain as a thing we have, whoever we are, or a thing that is part of us, whoever we are. We really don't like to just believe our brain is that, that, that the us is the simulation from this hardware. All right, uh, all right, hold what, on, hold what, on. What, 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 I don't what? want to. I don't <laughs> want to turn this. I know that there's a fine line between night attack and the <laughs> weird things. When and when Andrew's gone, it's hard for us to keep on the line of, <laughs> oh, of oh, go on. not this picture. <laughs> like how many? <laughs> there is a little bit of booty cheesecake in there. Well, like uh, all right, <laughs> yeah. So this is a, a story, and 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 everything that Brian said. Please make that the headline. <laughs> that that there are. Uh, uh, very uncomfortable conversations that we have to have around the idea of depression and loneliness and how much of it, it gets into some very interesting nature versus nurture and, and it, it, how we would try to combat this and whether or not oh, hello, it's hello, different it's for different I'm sorry. people. I'm, I'm the editor. I was caught on the subway. It sounds to me like yeah. you're the writer. You're the writer of this article. You I wrote am. a very important I article. I, all right, yes, all right, yes. all right. Uh, it's very everything. important for people, especially now in our modern era. You know, we, we need to understand yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. We got to run a picture along with this, don't we, right? Um, uh, sure. I was, was So I was, I was thinking maybe like... Uh, uh, the two hemispheres of the brain and maybe like some like synapses firing. Okay. Yeah. Counterpoint. Also, I'm the yeah. guy who gets to decide. Uh, yeah. Check out my effing hot girlfriend. <laughs> Look at that. That DA. Okay. That's a, not right. district attorney. I'm talking about no. the other DA. Yeah, check that yeah. out. She said she, okay, was, well, she said she was lonely. Right. Well, okay. She seems so, to be curled up as she if she lonely. was lonely. She for looks sure. kind of so lonely. It's it's so. <laughs> I mean, basically, it's just it's a it's a very attractive young lady in a large t-shirt and possibly nothing underneath it, looking out a uh, uh, windows. I'm we don't glad even we really agree. Know. Your story is very attractive. Loneliness uh, is very attractive. Can we? This can we maybe just have? Attractive. May maybe just have somebody like with their head in their hands or or something like that. Does it need? Because you can see half a cheek in this picture. Uh, yes. And what's between your face cheeks? Your brain stem. Am I right? Them clicks though. Yes, sir. See, I hired this guy <laughs> just to say those things. <laughs> Because I'm not lonely. We're doing this for the loans out there. People yeah. searching for lonely also. I don't that think booty. that that's an appropriate. Like, <laughs> I think you just might have broken ground on a new inappropriate thing to call people. Uh, the loans. Anyway, <laughs> the loans. Like, all right. I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to start a sub stack. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> So the uh, basically uh, to simplify this way down. It's a holiday classic. The horny people are lonely. Uh, the horn alones. Sorry. Horn, horn alone too. Horn alone. Stuck in man horny. Horn, uh, horn alone, <laughs> comma boo. Do, do the do the loans even know it's Christmas? <laughs> it's gonna be our new. Uh, but apparently they believe that lonely people uh, who foc would focus more on internal thoughts. Uh, as a means of compensating for actual social experience, uh, they uh, may think more about themselves. Uh, they uh, may, um, uh, 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 sorry here. Let, I, I wouldn't I, be surprised at all to find out that, um, and I don't know if this is, uh, let's divorce, the, divorce this from the lonely question, but, mm -hmm. but I, I certainly know, I, I do a fair bit of kind of talking to myself. Um, where uh, when it comes to I'm um, tempted to do something unhealthy, whether it's sleep in, play video games, not do work, not answer emails, all that stuff, th there's like a negotiation, a back and forth. And there's this weird phrasing I use like, okay, we will 
choose this or will do this or whatever. Yeah. Um, it would surprise me not at all to find out after a lifetime of doing that, that like a muscle, that part of my brain was a little bit more developed than, uh, than you might expect otherwise. Uh, and certainly if you're lonely and you're kind of engaging in what they call self-talk, uh, I, I, I suppose that makes sense. Now, and maybe I'm extrapolating too much in, into this, but, but the mm -hmm. idea of a physiological, more developed uh, thing uh, being correlating with, with uh, loneliness, that, that tracks to me. Uh, this, yeah. yeah. You know, sorry, uh, Bryce, go ahead, because this might answer my question. Uh, well, well th this is also rather prescient. Another study found that loneliness has doubled among older people since the beginning, the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and they link to, an, uh, to a study that says the risks of loneliness, loneliness are uh, equivalent to those related to obesity or smoking 15 cigarettes a day, which... What about uh, sitting? Before, Where does sitting come in? <laughs> maybe for extreme spot. loneliness. But if, but if you are, say, uh, an older person, or if you are living, you know, li living in a in a care center or something, you might be extremely lonely. You know, you might have both a mixture of loneliness and, you know, being, uh, uh, you know, in in a facility where you may not have a lot of freedom to, you know, to do. So activity. to take this in a in a weird thingsy direction, can you imagine? how far off uh, or what number one number one whether or not this would happen number two how far how far off it would be going to the doctor hopping in the brain scanner and getting a, a diagnosis of yeah looks like you're working pretty hard and getting lonely i prescribe to you these behaviors uh go outside play vr do you know become become passionate Doing it via about brain a video scanner. game or whatever well but i i think part of what what is here is the idea that like all of our brains find patterns, right? And that there might be a correlative effect of doing, like having all of the behaviors that lead to loneliness, like these pumps are primed on a brain function level, like that you can track that. You can track the inner monologue. You can track the, the uh, self-assessment that eventually then can lead to isolation or it can justify isolation. And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I could see, you know, part of this, I think, and, and they, you know, they, the, the average age for this study was about 55. And so I, I wonder how much of it is you, you to get to that point of being able to notice it on the brain, at least today, you know, requires that to be a very long term uh, pattern pattern of thought, right? Um, they they list some thoughts here: imaginary social interactions, nostalgic reminiscing, hypothetical conversations. Uh, lonely people are more likely to treat pets like people. All right, I hear you. I'm gonna go have dinner with my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Both eating out of Campbell's cans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with Cheetos on top. <laughs> dog is like best owner ever. <laughs> but I could see, I could see. Um, I don't know, within the next, say, a few decades, much like we have sleep studies, right? Like, here, wear this light, uh, you know, MRI on your head all day. Right. And we can kind of guesstimate what the activities going on in your brain are and, and what 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 that personality I, that's might interesting. Lead to. But I, I, I wonder if you need a doctor to tell you if you're lonely or not. Well, but, but, but like, uh, uh, along those lines, like, like that's a technological problem, not a engineer or an engineering problem, basically like, like there's no reason we can't have that in 50 or a hundred years. And then if you, once you diagnose everything, I, the ethical question as we get better pharmacologically or even behavioral science wise or nudges, um, uh, at some point watching, looking at your own brain, it's like looking at your own character sheet. And then the question about, um, uh, 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 ethically speaking is, do you have the right to modify your own character sheet? And do you have the right to say, no, 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 no. I want to become chaotic evil. I want to become a sociopath. I want to become something, something that, that, that other people will find repugnant and awful. Um, and, and now I, I have the source code of my own brain and I'm deciding to misuse this in an awful way. Well, I, I certainly think that there is a line in which we have to walk of what would be recommended or what would be healthy. That as we talk about this, 
what what you're saying, Brian, is almost more taking it to like a cosmetic surgery level of like, no, like I want to be a daredevil. I want to be somebody who cares less. I want to be somebody that is not falling into these patterns for which my brain has laid out for me. But even beyond that, if we're just going to try to optimize what is the most healthy thing we can do, that's a gigantic question. You know, is a world in which you are not quote unquote as lonely as as we uh, you, as you might be like what is the appropriate amount of loneliness where does loneliness bleed in with self reflection or or being just a prudent person that it, that enjoys a a quiet moment uh, as opposed to somebody that needs a, a total stimulus and interaction like they, these are like really kind of weighty questions well, and- if we have this quantifiably well, and I guess also now, now that opens up an, another interesting question. It's like, uh, okay, if loneliness is defined for sake of this hypothetical as the unpleasant sensation of wishing you were with other people, but not being able to be with other people, do you get like a loneliness-ectomy? It's like, uh, yeah, it's uh, um, due to the virus, due to my work schedule, due to my night shift, due to my immunocompromisation or whatever. It's I, I'm not going to be able to see other people as often as other people. I would love it if I just got, you know, just just reach out in there and just just, you know, kind of give a little neural flick uh, on 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 that part of me that makes me miss it. And then all of a sudden I won't miss it. And now I'm not lonely, even though I'm seeing the same number of people. I'm, uh, it, it almost sounds like you're describing like an antidepressant or like a yes yeah, 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 yeah we, I guess so. we have I guess we so. have those yeah 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 because uh, uh, I, I, I like I I, I like I, I think this is an interesting train of thought but it does make me think well we do have you know between psychology and psych- psychiatry and and uh, you know even group group therapies like uh, what is what would be the because this 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 article is just about finding that signature right seeing these right. trends of the brain but not necessarily any prescription to make it better if you want to be less lonely you should go and go to buffalo wild wings or something you should go to a bar and, and talk to somebody else which is difficult to do for sure but but i i think we're we're looking at a long term you know uh uh footprint in the brain and you know at the daily activities to to shift those things. But by, by the way, I, I, I think that we are onto something because <clears throat> we are in a very atypical moment in our history in that fear and public policy of a physical illness is now in the poll position ahead of mental illnesses. Normally, we have lived in, in a charmed enough society that we are more likely to think of and fear for our friends and family members for whom are going through a rough time mentally than we would be worried about our friend who never washes their hands and doesn't get a flu shot or something like that. That's, that's looked at as just rabble and, and like, ah, but you want to know what? Like, I think Doug's going through a really, really hard time right now. That's kind of at, at the top of it. And we're flipped right now, right? Now we're very focused on on the physical and we are uh, to the detriment mm-hmm. of of the the mental and i think that there's no world in which you know as this knock on wood uh a virus and pandemic subsides that we're not going to have a tremendous pendulum swing back to the idea of oh what damage did we do what is the mental and human cost and in that case it's like I, I, Bryce, I'm with you. Let's go look up whatever startup that has some, you know, like tiara thing that you just, you know, wear so you can get a, a, a measuring of your brain activity and then it'll recommend five or six different things that you can try to do on your own hand. And then the next level to Brian's point of like, no, let, and then if it's not, if it, if it doesn't go uh, uh, better by your subtle machinations, Are there things that would go forward? Because I think that we are going to look like right now we're closing our eyes to a lot of this. And you put, you pointed out the loneliness in 55 plus we're closing our eyes because that's the sacrifice we have to make. That bill's going to come due and it might come due in the next like four or five months where, where that's the biggest story is wow. Look at all the awful things that can happen as a consequence of this. 
Yeah, there's a there's a a counter example. I guess the same the same impulse swing in the other way. It was the wildest thing. Um, everybody has their own temperature uh, in terms of how comfortable they are with online life versus in person life, extroversion versus introversion, all that stuff. Um, uh, my my oldest uh, was increasingly really engaged in online forums, uh, fandoms around certain things, uh, uh, role playing and stuff. Uh, which which I was sympathetic to because in my teen years, I was very much the same. I didn't really start to go out and have friends in real life and go to parties until I went to college. So so none of that really bothered me. Bonnie was more extroverted uh, in her teenage years. So she perceived uh, uh, our oldest daughter's, you know, development as like, ah, is, it, is it okay that she spends all day online? You know, and I'm like, yeah, it's fine. But then like in one year, the whole world flips upside down and suddenly the exact same behaviors that were so concerning a year ago, now we're like, my eldest daughter is far and away the most well-adjusted, plugged in, highly social, best developed of all of us, uh, because because the uh, the world just flipped a switch just like that. Mm. Uh, yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting because at some point, the switch will flip back. Yes. I mean, we're we're uh, or, we're, or, or we're close, least, uh, or or at least it'll stop pushing exactly as as hard to the one direction as it has been at this moment. Well, I think whatever comes out of this will be new, right? Mm -hmm. And and we know it will likely look more like this moment than a, an immediate snap back to uh, where we were before. You know, yeah. Uh, uh, Which, by, so, by, like, by the way, uh, worth repeating. Uh, at some point, somebody said that uh, the expectation was we're looking at a slow rollout of vaccines, a hesitation for a year, and then basically late twenty three, early twenty four, uh, get ready for the party when we all remember what it's like to be extroverts and we all go to raves. Who, oh, hearing those numbers, I, oh, I knew it would. I knew it would be long. Well, I mean, but, but the nice well, thing is but, that but there's a lot. I, of, there I, are a lot I, of. I, I, also, I also don't think. I don't think that that's. I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't. I, don't, I, I mean, think I guess that the three of us are outliers in terms of we're all ready, ready to get back to to get. No, busy. no, no. Beyond beyond that, the question is exactly what all that looks like. Like what what does our world look like? We don't even know. So so let's. What does extroversion look like? Uh, does it look like extroversion looked like before? Because I think that's that was the idea. Like when when we were at the beginning of this, the the question was like, ah, as soon as this is done, just global orgy. Like that's what happens. And it's like, okay, but now it's not when it's done, it's not gonna feel like it would have if it had been done in June. Where because we all it'll had be this crazy and slow roll. Yeah, yeah. And and so it'll just become a thing. One day we're gonna read a a, a thing on Twitter that says Globally, there were no new recorded COVID nineteen things, and we, we will be so far beyond it. You know that what? It won't even I matter won't even us. see that because I'll be listening to an NPR podcast where someone will say, "Did you know that there was a virus called COVID nineteen? What? What? Yes, really? For reals? It was wow. that? Which was that in America? <laughs> it, it was, was all over." The world, the wow. world, the whole world, this world, the globe, this world that we live in, that Dr. Fauci lived in, lives, lives in. Because in the future, sorry. <laughs> oh wow, rest in peace. Stepped who's, into there. Who's Fauci? <laughs> the AIDS uh, doctor. He also was the coronavirus vi doctor. Hey Brian, uh, did you know that we have a Patreon? What? Yeah. Really? For this Patreon? program? For patreon.com slash weird things. And on that Patreon, we can give you so many benefits, including a custom RSS feed. Wow. Yeah. This is a thing. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> patreon.com slash weird things. Head on over there. Get your uh, episodes a little bit early. Get your custom RSS feed, and uh, uh, it, it's going to be a good time for everybody. Yeah. You get after things about two yeah. days before everybody else. Get email notifications, all the good stuff. Yeah. Patreon.com slash weird things. I got a little bit of a change in topic for you. Brian, Yep. I'm going to show you this image, and I'd like you to describe it to our audio listeners, please. Oh, the sadness of being alone. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, to, uh, okay, it looks at a first glance like maybe some kind of like Mars probe or something. It looks like a photo. If I was just going to guess without game theorying any of this, 
it's what I would imagine you would see as a Mars probe is about to land on Mars and there's like a rocket blast that's causing long shadows mm. and you're looking like straight down. Straight down camera. Yeah, that, that's what it, so, so imagine a, a rocket landing and, uh, and, and there's a bunch of long shadows of all the, the rocks around. All right. Uh, Justin, what do, you, what do you think this might be? I, yeah, I, it, 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 I'm, I don't know whether this is me being really stupid, but because of the color, I'm just going to assume it's some Martian rock formation. I, 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 well, before we find out, uh, what's funny is I thought Mars has to be a trap. It has to be obvious. I'm supposed to think of Mars. What's the opposite of Mars? Then I thought Venus. And then that led me. (laughs) To uh, get to uh, a best-selling book in the '90s. No, um, uh-huh. uh, yeah. Uh, there was recently some chatter. A Wired article was talking about uh, how do we explore Venus in a world where uh, Venus just melts uh, anything digital that goes in it. And uh, one of the ideas being bandied about is what if you create essentially a totally analog clockwork probe? So it uh, it's it's to- it would be totally analog. Uh, it, it lands, and because there's nothing digital that's going to melt while it's in there, you can make it of, of stuff that's able to tolerate those high temperatures. You can have it uh, collect energy with basically the wind uh, winds it up, and then the clockwork gets it to go forward. And, uh, I, you know, we, we lived with analog uh, radio transmissions for 200-plus years. Um, hmm. uh, that sounded amazing and awesome to me. But I don't think that's what this picture is. No, this is not what this is. What if I told you this was a little closer to Earth <sighs> and I, that okay. it was on Earth? <laughs> well, now, now that I'm looking at it, knowing it's on Earth, the fact that it's triangular in the middle makes me think of those monoliths that everyone's fashionably putting up. But I don't monoliths. see how that would get Monoliths. Monoliths. <laughs> monoliths. <laughs> Will it shoot straight up into a cloud? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh man i forgot sure it will it, sing it yeah. loud <laughs> no okay yeah not on your life so yeah. so these images... the ring came off my pudding can <laughs> <laughs> take my pen knife my good man so these images are some of uh some some that had been collected at the bottom of lake michigan what now that you know that what are we what do you what is this is this a, a boat sink uh, not oh. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> not I got right. really excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is even. I didn't even say it right. I just shouted a boat. <laughs> I'm <sank. sick>. Yeah. <laughs> so these are about ten thousand year old Stonehenge like structures. What under Lake Michigan? Uh, what? Okay. So made by humans in a pre Ice Age era, I guess? Question mark. Uh, pre- presumably, there was also unconfirmed, but they did find on one of the rocks what looked like what may have been a carving of a mastodon. Let me pull it up here for Holy you. Holy cow. And, and you can see in the photos, they're like a six arranged in a circle. It's very clearly intentionally made. Uh, the boulder with markings is about three and a half to four feet high and about five feet long. So it's not a huge pillar like, like Stonehenge is, but it, they do seem to be in a circular shape and... Uh, Arche- the I guess the divers found this and and believe that this may have been a mastodon. I think that there are still archaeologists who want to um, to see these petroglyphs to confirm them, um, but they do not. The, pet- the the those archaeologists do not dive very often, so they're still figuring out how to confirm these. But this would be. Oh, by uh, the way, that that is one of my favorite things is when multidisciplines um, that are that are not often to overlap have to work together and it's like like nobody is qualified to chime in <laughs> there's like three guys who's like yes i'm a master diver and a, a paleontologist or or uh, uh whatever yeah. archaeologist uh so that's um we got one other photo here you can see some of the larger pillars um from the dive here and it's oh that, yeah that's unquestionable there's wow. a, a very yeah. strong circular structure between these pillars so Anything, whether whether it's religion or art or whatever purpose they had for doing this, or to mark or a calendar or whatever, all of that seems like a, 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 such a flex against nature, where it's like, we did it. We know how to make food, fire, reproduce. Our guts are now shaped differently because we don't ever eat anything raw anymore. 
what else are we going to do with our time? I don't know. Let's, let's start making art. Uh, that's so amazing that so long ago, we essentially were doing the equivalent of, you know, making up MMOs and stuff. Well, I guess the question is also where in Lake Michigan, like where in the, like if we're to imagine uh, that man, you're, I, like, I, I wish if, there if was you, some easy you, way for us to point uh, when we talk about Michigan well, that no, everyone no, did no, always. No. Like, like it, when you were growing up, did you ever have like that one shopping center that always flooded? Like, like when it, when it rained, <laughs> this, this may like, be a particularly Florida story, but go ahead. But right. I understand. If but this were, is nearer to the coast, this exactly. may be may explain yeah. how it gets down there rather it's than like in the on, center on, of the lake. Ex yeah. And so it's like I I wonder if if there is a a correlative element of like, oh, okay, well, Lake Michigan used to be so small and now it has gotten bigger, or now it has shrank. Like, like where where in the human timeline are we on this? Um, yeah, I I I don't have that information readily. Or are they hiding it like those like those ding dongs out in Utah with the monolith? Are they like not not saying where it is because they're afraid a bunch of yahoos are gonna go down there and hang a barstool sports banner over it? Apparently, this had been found a few years ago, and there was just not a lot of information posted about it online. So this is still kind of a developing story. That that Michigan. also strikes me as a prudent decision, where it's like, let's say you find this and you realize. This is going to be the find that's going to make my scientific career. What are the ways all of this could be screwed up? I don't know if every Yahoo uh, waving a like like a kind of like the SpaceX splashdown with all the the Trump banner folks oh. just started circling around. It's like <laughs> I would I would I would probably keep this a little bit. Maybe quiet. just keep that on the quiet for a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, all right, one last uh, qu quick story here, and then maybe we'll talk about uh, temp tenant for for a few minutes here. Um, uh, I'll start off with the story, and you guys tell me what this is, because we don't know what this is. Uh, apparently, there are mysterious radio signals coming from Proxima Centauri, about 4.2 light years away. Oh, I, I saw the headline on this, so... But that's it. So I have no idea. Uh, yeah. what, what, like when when you say strange, do we mean pulsing? Because uh, at first we thought pulsars were uh, an intentional signal until we realized that gravitationally they start to you know pulse. I wonder where they got this. So apparently, what is very interesting about this signal is that it is in a very narrow radio spectrum around 982 megahertz. That is a range that human-made satellites and spacecraft are not broadcasting on or, or using. Uh, they uh, also say that there is not a natural, a known natural way to compress electromagnetic energy into a single band frequency. So I, I believe, um, I understand this in musical terms, right? When you're doing like an, an equalizer, you can't just have a hard cliff when you want to adjust. You have to round it off. Otherwise, it sounds very unnatural and it's very difficult to create um, you know, such a cliff and, between and, frequencies. Uh, uh, the version of that I think of is when I was kids, we, we had these gigantic CB, uh, you know, two to three mile range, um, you know, from mm -hmm. Radio ch radio Shack things. I, I think you see them on Stranger Things or whatever, but but you only got three channels. So whatever channel you wanted, you had to go to Radio Shack and buy individual crystals to create oh, just wow. in that in that one uh, uh, band uh, uh, to transmit. I, I have an idea but I don't want to say it until anyone else has an idea. Um, uh, and so right now, we don't we don't really know. We, 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 we don't know exactly what's causing this. It's a very narrow band, which seems too uh, very unlikely to be natural unless there's a new phenomena we are unaware of with with radio transmissions. But we don't we, we don't seem to have any spacecraft that would be creating a signal in that manner. So. So, so, so it does appear is. to be, uh, would, would it be modulated? This is where we reach the fringes of our scientific Ooh. understanding. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I, I, my magician mind thinks, uh, it sounds to me like what you've described is a hard problem of how would nature create a very specific signal in this one band? Um, and the magician mind to me thinks that's not the question. The question is, um, uh, how do you, you know, like, like, uh, what could block everything else except for that? And, um, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a cloud of dust or whatever, probably crystals from Radio Shack ah. that, uh, they're, uh, think about it. When's the last time you saw a Radio Shack? They had to go somewhere, didn't they? I yep. mean, if, if we're going to weird it up, 
could could we could it possibly I, I guess i don't know how far 4.2 light years is away it's exactly 4.2 light years away <laughs> I, no. I, I, it's the amount of Hell distance yeah! it takes 4.2 yes, years for the light to reach you but uh <laughs> I, I don't in terms of observation right if there was a civilization living 4.2 light years away would we, would it be obvious that it existed or not i i don't know that but it does seem if you if we wanted to to, to explore this it it could be a sign of a extraterrestrial civilization with some sort of uh i don't know yet un of her unheard of form of technology yeah and and because it's a very inorganic signal that 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 is kind of the big takeaway is that uh right oh, now they can what? only believe that this is technologically created that such a narrow radio frequency so I, I i know we love to to run free range but but to my skeptic filter says something like Remember when we discovered those stones that were hexagonal? Uh, when we discovered them, uh, when we first read about those those stone formations that are hexagonal, uh, the, the you, at that time when they were discovered, you could say no known process would make these. But then we study them, and then we discovered the process that made them, and now it becomes a known process. This this feels roughly in the God. It really does look bizarre, doesn't it? Uh, this this feels roughly in that neighborhood where it's like. Uh, um, we're the, just gonna wake up one day and realize, oh, you can actually. No, 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 no. That like the de the default hypothesis is that it's natural, and if it's natural, then it's unusual because we don't understand how it happens yet. Now we just gotta figure out how it happens. But but that doesn't. That's everything I said I is see. totally unhelpful outside of <laughs> outside of as a framework. If you don't want to leap straight to must be aliens, th th there's plenty of room mm. to roam around it. Now, I want to jump straight to let's jump aliens. straight to aliens. That's that's let's all go. I'm saying. <laughs> let's go. And it, it, you know, if if I was say if I was an extraterrestrial species and I wanted and I maybe had observed humanity and wanted to reach out to them, and maybe was being bombarded with radio frequencies for however long, maybe I would try to send a very pinpointed signal in what i believe to be empty airspace well, and, and well, airspace. Wait, uh, uh, okay so let me let me take your idea even, even farther sure. um if you are trying to say howdy then you would want it to be a pinpointed signal but you wouldn't just blast it willy-nilly into the, the blackness of space you would maybe send it specifically directly to one of your closest neighbors Oh. Uh, and there's a reason it's called mm. Proxima Centauri, and it's not because it's very far away. Right. It's because it has four legs. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Four four legs and two arms and a big muscly chest. Mm. <laughs> and uh, always is playing druid cards. <laughs> well, uh, if you listeners have any ideas, please send them in. Uh, we've got uh, email instructions and podcast notes uh, to send stuff in. I also want to thank RJ for sending in the alligator crocodile story that we talked about earlier today. Yeah, that one, that one really awesome. blew my mind. Um, Justin, should, do we want to talk about Tenet? Should that be this? Should that be after things? Uh, you know what? I want to congratulate you guys. That was a great discussion about Tenet. Uh, <laughs> really, uh, if anyone has any questions, <laughs> uh, 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 weird things, uh, nashcom at gmail.com. Traditionally, we save this for after, for after things. things. Okay, we can unless do that. We, unless, unless we have a really good after things question. Do we have do we have anything in, in the chamber for after let's things? I'll tell you things. what, Justin, Everybody we got gotcha. running out yeah. of time. Let's let's start to wrap things up on our tenant discussion. Let's, let's, <laughs> you let's got bring it. it on home. Uh, super uh, quick, you guys want to do some picks? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got. I finally got... Uh, <laughs> uh, it turns out that the anime... Okay. Uh, huh? The anime to give your daughter who hates everything cliched about animes. Mm -hmm. do, do, do you have a guess as to what this is? So imagine. It might be One Punch Man. That's only... exactly what it is. Uh... <laughs> I successfully got my daughter who is very loud about how she's so annoyed at all of the, the cliched tropes of anime. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Seems like you might like this one. And uh, uh, I left in the morning and they were on episode two and I came home and they were on episode 12. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Yeah, One Punch Man is a, is is great because it specifically kind of says no thank you to a lot of the formulaic uh, structures of and and is actively mocking might be too strong a word. It's kind of but... ir it's kind of got a little irony tinge to it. Yeah, it, like, it is like, aware of the other shows like, exactly where it's like yes, that's the bit we're doing. We're doing the bit where we're doing what's dumb about other animes. Yeah, um, 
That's awesome. Uh, where where is she watching that? Um, I believe on I think both Hulu and Netflix. It's definitely on Netflix. Nice, Justin. It's back, baby. The McRib. Expanse. Oh, expanse, expanse is 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 expanding all over my television. <laughs> Very excited about it. Uh, New I, expanse. I don't think I got a firm answer out of you about whether or not I should dive back in or wait until the last season, knowing that I fell off. Oh, well, it, it, selfishly, just so I can talk to you about God, it. Start watching it. it. Okay. Start right. watching it. And this is the final season, right? No, I think that they no. might do one after yeah, this. Yeah, there's one more. One more after that. Um, this is the fifth season. There's six seasons total oh i thought there yeah. were six books and five okay there, there are know. nine books and th and that's why the chatter in gossip land was that maybe it'll be six seasons and some movies ah which uh, look uh, uh, i will believe that they are done making expanses when jeff bezos dies because <laughs> apparently it's his like favorite show and he will just keep making it like i don't think that i mean this is a dude who like dressed up uh, and shaved his head when he was a kid for, or when he was a young man for uh, uh, a, a watch party for the last Next Generation episode, so we could dress up like like Picard. That's awesome. Uh, I don't think that that man is going to let his own uh, something that he controls die without a proper send off, and he certainly is not going to lack for money. Uh, also, even if they stop showing episodes. Who's to say what those actors are doing every third uh, weekend of their month <laughs> and why they're all traveling to, I don't know, uh, Los Angeles or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, it's it's great. Um, uh, the new episodes are, uh, they're a little bit more like the uh, uh, some of the earlier seasons that focus a little bit more on kind of the, the gritty political stuff, which is my, uh, my, my, my stuff, uh, what I love. Uh, it really is just, I don't know. It's, it's like my favorite science fiction show in since Battlestar Galactica, like nice. hands down. It's great. So are they doing episodes every week on Amazon prime? I think they blasted out three, three squirted first. out three. And then I, I, I heard that they're going to go three, three, three. Oh, okay. Um, but okay. I don't know. I, 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 I found that a little odd because I presume that they would do the same thing that they did with the boys, which was that initial three burst and then like one, 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 one. But, but uh, by the way, the one, 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 one was the reviews on in numbers of stars that people were giving it <laughs> before episodes even came out based on because that it was weekly. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, oh, where people review bombing. Oh, it yeah. No, it, babies. Was, it was rough. I, I oh, think there's, stop it. there's still a lot of figuring out in terms of streaming stuff on if you're not going to dump an entire season at once, what are you going to do for like, what is the best practice? And I think I bet Amazon is even still trying to figure that out. Yeah. Um, I've got a pick. I've, I've mentioned this before. I had not had a chance to play it much um, in, in the past uh, couple of months with the new consoles coming out. Um, but over this weekend, I was like, okay, I'm going to really sit down and try to finish this. Cause I could tell I was close and, and I was uh, getting, um, you know, making a lot of progress. And that is, uh, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. This is the science fiction um, strategy game slash um, uh, hand-painted, uh, I don't know, visual uh, narrative story. This is the one where it's everything. Everything from giant monsters to an right. epic ensemble cast to time travel. To Kaiju, to aliens, yeah. time travel, shifting gates. There's a talking cat who gives you a magical gun. Um, Man, do you think Penny would like this? I bet she would. I think she would would yeah i think she would i think that this is uh, similar in how um how one 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 punch man is kind of like okay i know that there's a structure to telling anime stuff and and we're gonna try to buck that i feel a lot of that in in 13 sentinels in that um it's really packs in a lot of story and a lot of plot but also has a lot of accessibility. If you forget stuff, like I had not played in a couple of months, so I could go to the encyclopedia and look up, okay, here's all the things I'm supposed to know and remember. Um, and also the gameplay, the gameplay is rel relatively easy if uh, you don't like strategy games. And I think you can ramp it up if you want it harder. But the fact that you can go back and forth and say, okay, now I want to be playing the, the strategy game. Okay, now I want to go and play the narrative game pretty much at will um, is, is really 
is really crazy. There are not games like that where you just say, I want to be this character and here's where you're at with this character now. Is, is this one that that I could, uh, let's say I wanted to uh, tackle Christmas. Uh, <laughs> 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 when I get it on a disc or just download it, I guess either. You could download it. I've yeah. downloaded it um, and I think it's price reduced for having been out for a little Ooh, while. Ooh, it's now. on Nintendo Switch. Is it? Uh, well, it says the word Nintendo Switch here, but that's a uh, Amazon, pro- for all I know, it's a uh, way to, Trick me. It, it it might be. I am only aware of it on the PlayStation at this moment. Um, oh, actually, don't buy it on the Switch because I think that's a different game. Oh, on deal. Amazon, I think they there was a weird. So we want thing. the PS4. I think it's on it's on PS4. Okay. Um, and it it it's it's beautiful. It's really well done, and I think the story is really intricate. And um, I think I'm in the last third of the game now, and it's it's great. You know, I do the narrative stuff, and I'm like, this is great. And then I move over to the strategy stuff, dreading it almost a little bit. And then I start playing. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm like knocking this out. Um, so I, I think it's really cool. 13 Sentinels colon Aegis Rim. Cool. All right. Well, yeah. uh, that'll do it for Weird Things this week. For Brian and Justin, I've been Bryce. It's been weird. Oh, there's a Japanese imported version. The English dub is very good. I'll say. <clears throat> the, the English and everything is voice acted. Well, Amazon's choice doesn't get here until mid January. Ooh. Yeah. Just buy it digital. Yeah, that's not as fair. Uh, you know what? Oh, uh, well. Yeah. Yeah, then it's not a gift. Well, and uh, so, right. so that is something we have to figure out is uh, uh, <laughs> I, I knew for a fact I wasn't going to get a PS5, uh, so I'm trying mm-hmm. to figure out what is a thing that Penny can open on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we're going to take uh, take a minute and come back and do after things. We're going to talk about uh, Tenet. Hey, uh, Justin, do do yeah. uh, since since we're running, uh, uh, do 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 we want to punt on happy hours so that we can have a full after things or? Um, I mean, we can keep after things short. We're not going to spend an hour. On okay. Things. Yeah. Um, but if you if you got, I'm, something... I'm fine either way. Uh, it's just uh, t- t- today after we do cord killers, we have to bank another cord killers, and right. then I do uh, Andrew Heaton's podcast. No, and... yeah. Then then let's yeah let's punt on happy hour. Okay. Well then, I, then... I certainly I certainly have stuff that I can I can fill it with. So <laughs> okay. okay. Well then we can feel good about that decision by going longer on after things then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, cool. Well, uh, we'll take a, uh, take a short break here and uh, come back with some after things. Hi, Justin. Hey, what's up, man? Good weekend. What's up, man? Yeah. Nice. Um, I'm at like uh, 89% or 98% rather. I'm dyslexic today <laughs> on this new thing. Did I send you the new thing that I'm releasing this week? No, I only know that there are secret projects happening and i don't know anything about them um well then let me let me actually send you today a Mm -hmm. new project that is a we're close enough that i can say it is a surprise thing it's it it is a surprise but it's fun it is a pilot for a new podcast oh and uh we're dropping it either tuesday or wednesday um, and, uh, uh, it's been something that we've been working really hard on mm. and I'm very excited about. And, uh, uh, so that was between that and then working on another project that I can't talk about. Like that was, that was the, the bulk of like moving the rock down the, down, down the road. Um, nice. but yeah, you know, it's been, uh. You know, it's it is a weird it's a weird time, obviously, with the holidays. The time, it. yeah. Just, I think it, there's just like you know, I said this on the PX3 Extra this morning. Like, this is a season to be survived. <laughs> like, let's yes. let's and 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 oftentimes I think we can have that mindset when you know holidays end of the year. We're measuring stick, remembering where we were, dealing with uh, you know our our families, which can oftentimes be. Very fulfilling, but very challenging at times. Uh, and fulfilling um, and great, and lo- and we love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but... No backseas with the psychologist, sorry. <laughs> you said it. Yeah. We heard it. It's there. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, you know, this... The, the best thing that I could say about a season like this is that it's kind of like the, the London fire. 
Like it is, it is raising everything that was around us so we can build something that might be a little bit better and we can appreciate the things that, that we, that we didn't have and we will rebuild those things first. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at mood wise. I'm just trying to kind of like, let's, let's just stay positive. Let's yeah. stay productive. And, and the further we get into this, the more shots in arms we see, the better off the world will be. Nice. Well, that's cool. I'm ex I'm excited for that. Uh, do you need to take a break, Ju? Juice? No, juice, I'm fine. Juice? Oh, man, are you you want to give me another gracious. nickname? <laughs> <laughs> Not that one. Not that one. <laughs> For the record, I hot, was I was mid drink. Rob, I was I was willing to just lift a nice team my way right past that one, <laughs> and then it got called out. <laughs> I was too busy yeah. thinking about Rob. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, oh, no. Hot juice. Hot juice is uh... hot juice. Oh. <laughs> Oh, right. like ah juice, <laughs> ah juice. Ah. Uh, okay. All right, we will talk about uh, uh, we'll we'll do some we'll do a tenant spoiler cast here on after things. How about that? Yeah. All right, I'll count me myself in in three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the After Things podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined with Justin Robert Young. Hello, and Brian Brushwood. Hey, man. Um, so <laughs> given what we're gonna talk about. I would I would love to know how many things I've heard right from the cultural gestalt. I guess I'll, I, I should. I so, went out well, number, of order. Number, number one, number one, uh, uh, please be aware that uh, uh, very appropriate for the film we are going to discuss in spoilers, this will be the forward version. We will almost assuredly have an inverted version <laughs> of this uh, when Andrew gets back, uh, yeah. uh, because I know he has a lot of thoughts about this. Um, uh, and, and, and maybe I'll feel differently. Maybe I'll watch it again and I'll, and I'll, and I'll learn and, and, and grow with it. But this is about tenant, the new, uh, the new, uh, Christopher, uh, Nolan. Christopher Nolan, Yeah. which can we start with this idea now, Bryce, having yes. seen it, but both Justin and I have seen it. Brian has not seen Brian it. is not. Um, is it very puzzling that. Warner Brothers steadfastly believed that this movie was going to be the popcorn, like, gotta know. see it in the theaters movie of the century. Uh, you know, I, um, but that was my exact feeling watching, walking away from this was like, that this was gonna save cinemas. This was, this was it. We well, were gonna I, go I, out in, and... in their defense. I think, I think their going forward with the theatrical release was more a rough estimation of, uh, as to. Uh, that was them playing the arm, arm, armchair epidemiologist and uh, on the one hand saying like, yeah, of course everything will be fine. People will go back to theaters. And on the other hand, Christopher Nolan saying, I literally hate any screen smaller than 20 feet wide. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, is that a screen? Uh, let me punch it. That was my phone, sir. And you know what? Hey, guess what? It just ends up being timed out right where, oh, you can now digitally watch Tenet the week before thanks before Christmas. Huh? Who did that? And even then, Bryce, you made a point uh, on on weird things. Maybe it was before that Christopher Nolan films in general have this like very dad. Everything <laughs> kind of feels like Bond. Uh, most of the things take place in a world where all the characters only go to the sharper image. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, there's a lot They're of all big, speaking beautiful. In, in terms and code. Michael Caine is there like uh it's it's just this it's its own gestalt right that feels very Christopher Nolan now that he's done enough movies but at the same time man do you realize why he was perfect for Batman mm. because you mm -hmm. don't need to know why these characters are kind of standing around because he's Batman He's Batman. Like you, He's doing you, Batman you, stuff. You, you, you bring all this stuff before in a way that, and I don't know whether or not I'm going to learn so much more if I watch this movie again, but while the acting in Tenet, I think is great. It really redefined really Robert Pattinson as an actor for me because I think he's fantastic in it. Uh, and I, I love uh, John David Washington, but like, boy, do I not know shit about those characters and do I not care about why or how they are going through this intensely cerebral adventure, action adventure story. Uh, uh, the, the hooks into this world are very subservient to a very complex and intricate 
uh, story. And and it's it, it is trying at times as they move through the stations of the cross here. And again, very intricate. I'm sure that if I go read that Wikipedia and if I go rewatch it, I'm going to be like, man, wow, that was a, a plug back in. And I do remember that shot, blah, blah, blah. But wow, is it hard when I don't really care mm-hmm. what, who, like what the skin in the game these characters have. Like, so, I, so am I, am I yeah, right in, in sitting on the outside of this? Uh, what I hear is it's basically imagine two mementos playing at the same time, one forward, one backward, and they intersect at some moment. Mm, more than that. But, but you, have, you have the general I mean, idea. Just about you have, so, you, yeah. you have, you have the general idea. Like, uh, uh, there essentially our main character finds out that he is tasked with saving the world within the first 20 minutes, like 15 minutes. There's like one big action scene. And then he finds out that he's tasked with saving the world. And there is like a massive thing that, that is beyond anyone's comprehension. And that's his motivation for the rest of the movie. And aside from that, yeah. like he kind of likes two people he just met. I mean, he seems like a very nice guy. Even like they at that initial uh, standoff or that initial sort of knowledge dump, uh, you know, the agent who's telling him is like, yeah, man, we don't, we are not supposed to know the nature of this cold war between our time and the future. Um, and that- I, I assume that's, that's to forgive everyone at home don't worry that you don't understand any of this. You're not supposed to understand any of this. Not even our, us are allowed to break the yes. seal and understand yes. any of this. Yes. Yeah. And and it's, it's, I don't know. Part of me thinks like there is a lot of time spent trying to like unfold the, you know, this kind of inverted state that, that uh, objects and people can be in. Delaware. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, but um, I wish that there was less of it because, there's so much like trying to make it make sense and trying to like, oh, but now and oh, but this and oh, but th-, where it's like, just tell me that there are people in reverse and 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 just shave, you know, 20, 30 minutes off this film. Like I, I at some point like, OK, so this is like a major secret, except for the fact that there are two warring armies at the end of this movie fighting each other, <laughs> half of them in forward, half of them in reverse. Uh, OK, cool, James Bond. I I, I wish it didn't take itself as serious as it did is I guess what I, I think I walk away with this. And there's also to me, the uh, main character's name protagonist. Yes. Uh, okay. He's named protagonist. Right. Uh, and I'm, I'm cool with that. Uh, as, 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 a, as or he's, he is Neil not Stevenson. named. He is, he, they, they don't yes. in the subtitles. His name is protagonist. No, but, and people colloquially refer to him as a protagonist and it's a thing and it goes back and forth, blah, blah, blah. Like the, the, the larger point is that it really is painting it red that, they didn't write a central story. And let's compare this to, or a character story and a character background. The The obvious movie that you're going to compare tended to is Inception. And that to me is a better or at least more enjoyable movie, mostly because Leonardo DiCaprio gets something to do. Like he, we know who this guy is. Yes. He is on a crazy mission. He has one yes, mission. Yeah. Yes. It involves all this crazy technology, but also He's a man who's grieving. He's a man who is probably throwing himself more into this than he should because of the the personal situation he is. And then as the story unfolds, we find out, oh, okay, there is a question of whether or not he is indeed even in control of, of, of any of this, right? Is he so sunken into this situation where this has all subsumed him? I know that about him. I can hook myself into that story. And then the rest of the like, well, in a dream within a dream, does it go faster? Or does it go slower? And blah, blah, blah. And how many levels are we in right now? How much slower should it go? I can dial my care about that up or down, depending on how much it affects my main character, the person that I'm following. And that's where I think for me, Tenant is like, no. Like, Christopher Nolan made Inception. He's like, this was good, but I should strip out more of the humanity. And, and let's pack more into 
the 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 very intricate universe that I'm building. Yeah, uh, that 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 was one thing I dug about Interstellar, and I am a full on Interstellar apologist because that movie's uh, good. I like uh, the movie. Well, in what I, what I especially dug about it, and you're right, is it, it, at its core, it's a very very simple story. Dad goes away on a business trip, sees his daughter later. The end. Right. Right. Um. Uh, very relatable. Uh, and the head in his own butt aspect of Nolan is the fact that he had groundbreaking new models of accurate black holes created in and and you know shaped in such a way that he could visually tell a, a rich and engage, engaging story. But it sounds to me that it was all of the accurately modeled black holes, and none of the dad goes on a business trip. There's, yes, yes. There is a lot of time spent on making the forward progression and the the uh, the backwards progression of time make sense in these big set pieces, right? The big shootout on the highway. You're like, why is this car a part of this? Why can't we see the driver? Why did we just like ignore it now that we're done? And then, oh yeah, hey, guess what? Guess who's in that car? Um, but I think there's I think there's so much in trying to like gotcha with hey we're gonna revisit the scene and now these characters are actually these characters and they're also doing these things at the same time and not like making those scenes great like i think i had i watched inception for the first time after watching this and yeah. like inception first off tenant has is very well executed the reverse stuff oh no, it's it's is, insane it is it is beautiful it is it is it is the most well-made movie i think i've ever seen but the act, a lot of the action stuff, like, is not, doesn't play well as action, or is not big. Like the 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 plane, there's the big, the big plane scene where it crashes into a hangar is so tepid. It like just like sc it scoots into the hangar almost like, and I, or or that highway scene, right? Talking about the 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 there's the car that is backwards and in, in the middle of it. Like, oh yeah, hey, uh. Uh, that scene just kind of happens so fast that like half of it you don't even see the first time. Literally, they don't show you like any of the case interacting with that car or the thing coming out of the case. Like literally, it's not like hey you missed it. It's hey we didn't even fuck it freaking show <laughs> freaking show you. <laughs> oh, so <please>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we didn't even show you it, which which I think is very frustrating. You know we we do we do scam scam nation scam school for for however many years, mm -hmm. and the thing I'm always very aware of is like. There's a difference between showing somebody something and they missed it or just not showing them anything at all, at which it like feels like uh, cheating, for lack of a better word. Like, sure. oh, you didn't see this. Ha ha. Because I didn't you, you didn't, didn't have the chance it, yeah. to or we cut that time out. Right. Um, and that is th those things happen enough where I'm like, well, what is what is the goal here to set up this very intricate back and forth story or to tell a great action movie. If this was just a great action movie, this could be a great action movie. But it there's... To be honest, I it, it I wanted it to be a Bond movie. Literally, that exact same movie, but instead of John David Washington or John keep John David keep Washington. He's great. Except he just says He's the new Bond. Um, He's like, oh, my name is Bond, James Bond. And the whole movie goes by. At least you have this idea of like, oh, okay, super badass gentleman spy. Uh, uh, and he's interacting with powers that he may or may not be able to trust, blah, 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 blah. Like, it, it, it is what whatever it is, but at least you'd be able to have that sheen to it. Bryce, I think you hit on something that I was talking to Ashley about last night after we watched it. The difference between Inception and Tenant is that an action movie in, a, in, in dream worlds is something that I can comprehend and is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. The idea of people going backwards while technically insanely impressive, I don't know if it's that cool to watch. Like they have these like these fight scenes that are insane, and apparently you know there are uh, uh, there's choreography of of all these stunt people that were doing the 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 things backwards. They learned how to uh, uh, how to make fight. it look backwards. Yeah, how what, to make what, it look backwards in camera for that one like, person, not for both people, just for one, so that you just have for one them going in different time directions, and it's like. That's cool and all, but is I don't know. Like if I'm like if I were a kid, I would I, I would be out there 
on the playground being like, I'm going to flip backwards in a way that like, like, oh, you tried to punch me, but you're in a dream world. So your fist crumbled well, and, or whatever. And, uh, like, like I, I can't speak to whether or not one is cooler than the other as a concept, but I do know that I go to one of those locations <laughs> every single night. Yep. And the other yeah. one, you have a hook. my brain is biologically wired to prevent me from really ever seeing. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. There are th the things that they layer on top of the inversion are very, very particular to this specific story. They make a whole point of saying once it, it, once he's about to be inverted himself, of saying, "All right, everything works backwards. Uh, fire makes you very cold, and you don't jump, you unjump." And hey, guess what happens? Ten minutes later, he gets in a big get explosion a and gets hypothermia. Oh. Oh, yeah. no. sorry. <laughs> it's like, and if you paid for this movie, look for a check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, um, no. Bryce, I, I think I caused you to spit. <laughs> There's a little. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, sorry. Um, um, and, and so, like, that, like, that doesn't even, that doesn't even make sense. Like, it, at this point, we're not even talking about, like, just, okay, this object is now moving temporarily backwards but now its relationship to all of physics is negated but well, only some of physics right fire is now cold and and you undo gravity but gravity is not upside down and you you have to have an oxygen tank because your lungs won't take in oxygen from the air for some reason like like the, there's a lot of stuff where it's just like i think you just try to make it complicated and, and impressive and uh, or write uh, yourself. Out. I I can I uh, you, you, man I could totally see falling into a if then if then if then and finding yourself in a in a tight spot because I remember mm -hmm. must have been six or seven years I was thinking about like what if uh, there was like a for lack of a better word a time quake on planet Earth and all of a sudden time moved at different speeds or relative speeds and um, which would be the more valuable places versus uh, less valuable places. For example, if you're a celebrity where your youth is what's valuable, then you would go to a place where time moves very slowly compared to everywhere else so that you could stay young and you would just pop out every 10 years uh, to do a quick tour for the rest of the world and then maintain your youth. However, uh, a different area might suddenly become an important place to put all your top scientists so that you could develop technologies faster than other people because the time relative would go faster for them or whatever. But uh, uh, talking about, and this is probably why uh, uh, leading into why Andrew Bain loved all this. Like the moment I even pitched this idea, Andrew Bain was like, uh, you're, uh, you're going to have to fix crops. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, not enough energy. And uh, if, if the sunlight is what fuels crops, you uh, suddenly don't have enough energy to, to grow crops. And it's like, okay, so then maybe all of a sudden, uh, uh, we would need a location that's near the equator that's normally too hot to grow anything, but we yeah. get an autumnal whatever. Like like all of those those fun sidesteps, uh, I mm -hmm. would imagine that this idea became just too tempting to chase down every is, one of those little things. You are you are never more than ten to fifteen minutes away from somebody else explaining something else, and either it's about this universe or about the the going backwards or it's something where you're like, oh, wow, that's kind of a weird thing that you just explained this crazy environmental thing. Oh, it's so you can set up another crazy thing that's going to happen when they come back through time. Like, uh, I mean, the, the one pet peeve I had about the movie, Brian, Interstellar, what was the thing that people bitched the most about? Um, there was a scene, a scene that people complained about a lot. Oh, uh, 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 oh, the, the, sorry. Uh, I was thinking of a different movie. You're talking about the astronaut in the bookcase. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, 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 uh, the, the, the sound design in the, the, the takeoff scene, right? Where they're having the conversation, but you couldn't hear it oh, because the sound I, I, mix I, was so loud. I vaguely remember that. I thought they okay. fixed it in some, I, I think some theaters had that problem. Others mm -hmm. did not. This no, no, movie this has was that problem. A, no, no, Nolan. He intentionally like, does that. Defended it. No, he does. And so again, in this fucking movie, there's a big scene <laughs> where 
all of our no, and it's weird too because it's like in this again James Bondy spy kind of way where there's an evil guy and a and a gray character and our hero and the hero has to just kind of play along with things and so the villain's like let's go sailing and he's like cool and let's you almost it. just and you almost just <laughs> feel that like and now they're sailing on these like gigantic like crazy sailboats and it's like they're literally no one's literally just doing this so he can have them have an important conversation when the most amount of noise is happening wind noise water noise and they're like, on like, little headsets so there's like technological so <laughs> and they're having like a massive important conversation moving the plot forward and it's like nolan just has this boner for like did i hear that did i really hear that? like like that's like another way that I mean, he, he can does, like, enhance like, the mystery uh, uh, unfortunately the side effect of that is those moments of frustration are why years ago i gave up um as far as i know the latest hearing test i have i have fine hearing but um the not being sureness of well, like, am I supposed to know? W was that English? And then you know, five minutes later, I find out it's a character's name or something. Like yeah. I hate all of that ambiguity, uh, and so it's like I watch everything with closed captioning on. And mm. my guess is that's probably not how uh, Christopher Nolan would prefer I enjoy this movie. But it's no. exactly how I will, and you will, and you should, because it was one of those things where like we literally, my mom got Ashton for Christmas a new sound bar system Ooh, right nice. so i hooked it up yesterday and that was part of the reason why i wanted to watch tenant because a i, I knew i assumed andrew was going to be on and we could talk about it but also like i'm like oh look the new sound bar we'll get a, a movie that obviously is going to have exquisite sound put it on and then as soon as they got on the boat and they're like like hey like time people go forward and not back and he's like i don't know i might kill my wife and it's like like what the <laughs> fuck why <laughs> why <laughs> <laughs> I'm like great. I have now. I have five points of uh, of 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 directional audio of not being able to hear what the hell these people are saying. Um, I I think the 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 big I don't know the 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 end. Like, can we talk about the end of the movie where they decide where where it it, it, it you realize okay we are fighting for a literal MacGuffin and. All of these hundreds of soldiers on both sides are, you know, fighting in this paintball arena um, to get literally. Which, which, by the way, I, I will say this. Some of the coolest shit I've ever seen on film. Like there is there is a scene that I don't even want to like everything else we can spoil here because it's mostly incomprehensible gobbledygook until you see it. But there are visuals in that scene that are like insane, that are that are just just great. Like uh, that, that's where Nolan flops his whole dong out there. And is like, no, this is why I made an overcomplicated action movie about things going forward and backward. Like there's really cool stuff. Yeah. But holy crap. Like I, I'm, I'm with you. Like, like what you, you what end up with here? three guys in the desert holding a crankshaft and then they decide they're not going to destroy it. The thing that they, that all of these people died for the most secret agency in the world had he to get this, weird unknown crankshaft that will destroy the world and they don't destroy it why what like I, it, it it if so wait, we're going to set saying, up tenet saying, 2 you got to this point and you're like guys why aren't you spinning your gears and then they look right down the camera and say we have been the whole time brian i don't know whether or not you're gonna love the movie or hate the movie when you hear <laughs> what the MacGuffin's called Oh, uh, okay, cool. I, I look forward to it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because the MacGuffin never goes outside of MacGuffin status. It's literally, here's the thing. They're going to use the thing to end the world, we think. So we need to destroy it. And then they don't. And then they don't. And, and also, we never see them. Like, right. we, see, we see their henchmen. We see the guy see, who is working for the bad guys. We see their toady. The yeah, we guys. see their, yeah, their, their, their quizzling that is uh, amongst the present uh the motivation for why they're doing it i feel like all of the motivations you fucking, are bad you spent uh, spoiler alert why does the future want to kill the past C global warming Ugh. it's like it's like you spent all this time and effort 
on all the southern mythology. You couldn't come up with anything else? Well, you couldn't? Uh, okay, uh, let, let, let me, uh, uh, Your Honor, uh, public defender, I just got here. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm just now getting details on the case. <laughs> um, I do remember... It was, um, uh, and we've it talked about Exxon this before. Exxon Valdez. There, the low-budget movie by Kurt Wimmer, uh, Equilibrium. The opening scene, it's, it's, it, it takes place in a dystopia where nobody's allowed to feel emotions because that leads to bad things and war and so on. But um, the opening scene is they kick in the door and the bad guys find sense offenders, people who have stopped taking their feel-nothing drugs. And they discover all of this art or whatever, and then and they they they're like, okay, now burn it, and they burn all the art. Uh, it happens to be the Mona Lisa. And when I listen to uh, the director's commentary track, he says, "I know what you're thinking, the Mona freaking Lisa." Here's the problem: we tested everything. Starry Night, we tested this. He rattles off like seven different famous paintings, and he said, nobody could recognize any of them. We had we had to. It was literally the only way to get the point across in the first 10 seconds of the movie. Sorry. Yeah. And, uh, and global and, warming sounds to me like the Mona Lisa of disasters. And, and I can Ooh, understand put that on my, <laughs> <laughs> put that sound point on, on my, on my tombstone. And, it, uh, you know, it's been, uh, 48 plus hours since I've seen this movie. So maybe I, I might be remembering the sequence wrong, but we'll see it again it, in 48 point something. <laughs> but it, it, it could, it could just be like, if the whole point is that, nobody really knows why they're doing it and they only know that they are putting this thing together to try to end the world maybe that's just the best guess that you have is like well we know global warming is bad and we know we're probably not going to do anything about it it's it's just i i can appreciate tenant as an achievement but what i loved 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 about inception was it took a very complicated idea, right? Okay, you can get into somebody's dreams and, oh, like uh, uh, baked into the initial premise, you can get into somebody's dreams. There are dream thieves that go in and get stuff out. And so now that's all it like just baked into the idea of walking in the theater. We're not even gonna spend a ton of time talking about that. Uh, now they're gonna go on the greatest heist of all time and that's leaving something there instead of taking something. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's where we start. But then it made a really fun kind of popcorn movie out of it. And, and it had a big honking movie star in, in uh, Leo DiCaprio. It had a sexy troubled backstory with, with uh, Marion uh, Cotillard. It had Tom Hardy as this like comic relief character who was like, they had a whole like team of like the wacky heist guys. And then you go with that. Like I, I now felt I had a little oceans 11 team that obviously is in a more troubled movie. And now we go on this adventure. So it's like the fact that he was able to put together, not a, something very complex and very fun was the achievement. And this is very complex. I just don't think it's very fun. Because if if at some point you lose the thread on Inception, you still know, okay, there are, there are layers of dreams and people just got to do the thing that they're doing right now and you believe it. And with 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 Tenet, it's a lot of like, why are we... What, like, if you... if It feels like if you can't really understand the mechanics at play, everything just feels... It just feels like nonsense. And and that's uh, yeah. You guys haven't used the terminology, but everybody rolls their eyes eyes when I keep bringing it up. It's like when a movie or a TV show becomes made of rubber. Man, do I check out when when there's no consequences to anything, uh, and 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 I don't understand the stakes or feel them. Uh, I, I I think I think that you are going to the challenge that I had was that you you're like okay like scene 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 scene. I'm like well what are we. Do I like? I don't know. Is it, did his dad die? Like, uh, is he? Does he need to make the rent and pay for his daughter? Does his daughter think he's dead? Because spoiler alert for the opening scene in the movie, that there's questions about exactly how, you know, uh, how much the world believes he's alive. Like, is he gonna have humanity or is he just gonna be Commando Man? And he's just kind of Commando Man the entire movie. And like, what you find out, Brian, is that seventy five percent into the movie, you're like. Oh no, about 
30 minutes ago, we passed this meridian line where now we're we going to live do the first half backwards. of the movie again. And you're like, oh, all these things were kind of bland, maybe intentionally, because they needed to put they, these they, clues in. They couldn't in. tip too much too fast. Yeah, he can't like go I, look at his 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 daughter in the first five minutes and then slam the laptop closed and be like, fuck it, I don't have a daughter anymore. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I, I think that it it is a movie in service to itself, which in and of it, it, it as as a a project is like kind of really amazing. It it's it's remarkable that they let him make this movie and and spend the amount of money that they spend on it because it is a very it's a big honking movie mm -hmm. but uh uh yeah th there's just not quite there's like none of those lines of like you know inception me and andrew said to each other forever since we saw that movie like you know tom hardy's like 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 oh you mustn't be afraid to dream a bit bigger darling and has the fucking grenade launcher <laughs> or whatever like that's like cool shit that's cool shit that's a fun human moment where uh, a character makes a joke to another character. I don't know if there are jokes in Tenet. And if they if they are, they might be ones that you could only appreciate if you well, hear it Well, when you backwards. watch it backwards, you'll see that there's five punchlines that are delivered before the joke. <laughs> yeah. Dog up what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Any any other last thoughts or, or questions on Tenet? Uh, I feel like I, we've... I, uh, uh, you know what? Congratulations, gentlemen. You've sold me. <laughs> <laughs> you got the tenant account and I'm going to be giving it my full attention immediately. My recommendation yeah. is, I mean, the, uh, when I went to go buy this, I bought this on iTunes and they were like, you know, this is coming to rental the first week of January. If you maybe want to wait to pay like half as much and just rent it. Um, so I think if, if, if some people are on the fence, maybe it's coming I to mean, rental look, soon. Here, here's, here's what I would say. And I would encourage people to watch it. This is a movie that is built to talk about with your other movie loving friends. All your movie loving friends should see it. It is it is a a great 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 conversation piece because it is not in any conventional way bad. It is a movie that for which you are going to be able to judge it on its choices and it makes its choices very confidently. Mm -hmm. Um already well that'll do it for after things, thank oh, you. Oh, I didn't realize he was the only credited writer. This thing makes so much more sense if he was the only fucking credited writer and <laughs> nobody else saw this script. Oh, man. Uh, well, that'll do it for After Things this week. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you guys have a good holiday. As for Brian and Justin, I've been Bryce. It's been After. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm glad we uh, gave that more time to breathe. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Absolutely. Everybody. Uh, we are going to go offline. No happy hour today. That'll come back on Wednesday, presumably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Keep an eye out on Baby. social on social media. I got an I'll have a special announcement about holiday streaming plans soon. Uh, Cord Killers coming up later today. We got Tinvec on, and we're going to record the Killies after that. So that'll be fun. Uh, Justin R. Young on Twitch. Everybody have a good rest uh, of your Monday. Oh yeah. See ya. Bye. Call.